Hi, and welcome to a conversation about Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law basically talks about how a force can be applied to a advised spring and how it, how it reacts to forces. And there's a couple of things you can do to a spring, um, one of which is you can, you can stretch it out longer and longer and longer. And one of the things you can do is you can actually compress it in and in and in until all those coils get close together. A lot of springs you'll see will look sort of like this with them all compressed, and then it's hard to imagine being able to compress it. Uh, but if you imagine a, a spring that's already stretched out a little bit, um, that's a little bit easier. Um, so Hooke's Law talks about an ideal spring. So we talk about an ideal spring if you if you take that spring and you stretch it out, say, really far, you stretch it out really far, and you let go, it'll stay out there. I think we've all probably played with a metal slinky or a metal string that you've pulled too hard on, and it never went back to its original shape. So if you've done that, it's no longer obeying Hooke's Law. Um, same thing can happen if you squish it too much. Um, it'll permanently deform, it will no longer go back to the original shape, and it'll stop um, going under the guidelines of, of Hooke's Law. The third thing we don't talk about a whole lot that you can do the spring, though, is there's kind of a third motion you can do. So you can actually twist it. You can twist a spring, too. Um, and that would obey Hooke's Law as well, as long as, of course, you didn't twist too hard. Um, lots of things act like springs. So um, it, it applies to lots of things and is useful. You could imagine a ruler. That's not a very good ruler. Let's draw a ruler there off the end of a desk. And if you, if you hold it right here while it's on the desk and, and push it down, you could then bend it up or down. And then we let go and make that sprawling noise uh, and would go right back to where it was. And so Hooke's Law, Fs is equal to negative kx usually looks like this. Um, the first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is this negative sign. What this negative sign means is a direction. So what it's saying is if you displace the end of your spring this way to the right, your force will be in the opposite direction. Um, the thing is, though, we will determine directions from diagrams. We will never actually independently think about the direction. So it's much more useful just to think of Hooke's Law as Fs is equal to Kx. And what this tells us is the farther we displace the spring from equilibrium, so if we just put our spring down on a table, that's its equilibrium length. And then if we hold one end still, grab onto the other end, and stretch it out, we've displaced the end. And what Hooke's Law says is the more we displace the end, the harder it's going to pull back. So it'll take a small force to displace it a little bit and a large force to displace it a lot. Um, so that looks a little bit funny, but Fs is the spring force. You should be used to the subscripts now on the types of forces. Um, it's going to be measured in newtons like everything else. X is displacement from equilibrium. Um, it's usually going to be in meters, but it's worth noting that if you have something like twisting going on, then you could also have it in something like degrees, and that would also work. K is our spring constant. This is inherent in each and every spring. So each spring might have a different spring constant. Um, there's no real way, or, way to look it up. It depends on the type of material it's made, how it's wound, how thick it is. Um, everything about it is different. It's inherent in every spring. Um, if we're looking at units for spring constant, we can take our Hooke's Law, Fs is equal to Kx, and we can arrange it, Fs over x is equal to K, and we can see that the units are going to be a newtons divided by whatever our units for displacement are, which is usually meters, newtons per meter, but it could also be something like a newton per degrees as well. Um, let's take a look at a bit of an example. Um, let's take a spring. Boop. 
This is how I draw springs. Uh, hopefully it's good enough that you guys, after you've seen one or two of them, can identify that that's what a spring is. And this is its equilibrium position. And let's uh, say it takes, oh, that's a bit of a gross hit. Let's try again. It takes 70, me 70 newtons to stretch a string. Two meters. So we take this end of the spring and we drag it out two meters um, until it's a very long spring. This is a very, very stretchy spring if we can get it out two meters and we don't break it. So we've got our Fs is equal to Kx, our force, uh, and we want to rearrange it for K first so I can divide both sides by X. I get a K is equal to Fs divided by X. So my K for this particular spring is going to be 70 newtons divided by 2 meters. So my K is going to be 35 newtons per meter. Let's do one more example. Example 2. Um, a 20 kilogram mass is hung from a spring with a constant constant of three newtons per meter. How far do we stretch the string? Or how far does the spring stretch? Does the spring stretch? This one's going to take a little bit of critical thought. We've got this spring going on, and then we attach this mass on the end, and we know that there's going to be a spring force pulling up on this mass, uh, Fs. And we also know on this mass from the last lecture we looked at, there will also be a force due to gravity. So if we let that come to rest and it's not moving anywhere, it stands to reason that... The spring force has got to be equal to the force due to gravity. We know that the spring force is going to be equal to kx, fs is equal to kx, and we also know that the force due to gravity is equal to mg. So then these things must be equal. kx has got to be equal for this particular scenario. kx has to be equal to mg. If we want to find out how far it stretches, we can divide both sides by k, and x is going to be equal to mg divided by k. So my x is going to be equal to my mass, which I think was 20 kilograms. g, close to the surface of the earth, there's no reason to assume it's not, is 9.8, and my k is going to be 3 newtons per meter, so that x will work out to 65 0.3 meters. Uh, Hooke's Law is pretty straightforward. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Thank you for watching, and I just wanted to remind you guys a couple of keys for success. Uh, number one, you got to do the practice questions. If the things I'm saying make sense, that's phenomenal, but you still have to practice and make some mistakes on your own. Um, and that goes along with number two. If you get stuck, uh, ask me questions. Get in touch. Um, write me an email. Make an appointment or leave a comment on the YouTube video. And uh, step number three to success is look after yourself. Eat good food, get some exercise every day, and socialize as much as you can right now. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well, and I will talk to you soon.